She looked like an old grandmother straight out of a postcard. Her long white hair was twirled expertly into a bun. No errant curls escaped their prison. Her dress was a lovely blue floral pattern that trailed down to her shiny black shoes. A large brown shawl hung around her shoulders to protect her against the night air. I wasn't certain if this was a costume or if she always dressed like that. She smiled at every trick-or-treater that came begging for candy. They'd approach her rocking chair, holding out their sacks and bags and plastic pumpkins in supplication, and cheerfully chant trick-or-treat. Her house was not decorated for the season as extravagantly as her neighbors. Her only Halloween adornments were two large pumpkins, proudly sitting on the stairs. Their faces were carved in tortured expressions, with candles flickering tauntingly in their hollowed-out guts. I hesitated on the last step. She glanced over at me and waved, beckoning me to come closer. She smiled then, large and wide and artificially perfect. Her teeth were as white as peppermint. Holding out my bag, I said, Trick or treat, please. She giggled, and it startled me. Her voice was surprisingly young. Such a polite young man. She giggled again, reaching into her basket of candy. The candy she pulled out was as large as a clementine and expertly wrapped. I could see the light reflecting off the blue wrapper. I was transfixed for a moment before she gently dropped it into my bag. It rested there against my other candy, but it stood out against the dull wrappers of my tiny Hershey and almond bars. Thank you, I said, turning away and running down the stairs to the safety of the sidewalk. Happy Halloween, she called out to me. I didn't turn around, but kept walking. It wasn't until I turned a corner that I felt like I wasn't being watched. The night was filled with treasure. I finally went home. Not because I was tired or it was late, but because my candy bag was already filled to bursting. I walked into the house triumphant with my prizes. I dumped the whole lot of it onto the living room floor. Separating the candy was part of my yearly ritual. Anything with coconut I despised, and it went to my mom who loved it. My father would take anything with peppermint, as I didn't really care for that either. My sister, Jacqueline, would take anything with nougat, as I really hated that too. Wow, you really got a lot this year. Jacqueline cooed from behind my ear. I hadn't heard her approach, and I know she was just snooping for some nougat. What's this one? She asked reaching down and plucking up the blue-wrapped candy the old lady had given me. I had almost forgotten about it. In the light, I realized it wasn't just blue. It glinted purple as Jacqueline turned it around in her hands. She held the candy under her nose and sniffed it. It's filled with nougat, I can tell. It definitely has a nougat smell to it. She smirked at me as if she was daring me to disagree. I shrugged. As long as I had my milk chocolate and peanut butter, she could have the rest for all I cared. It's yours, and this pile is yours too. I pointed to the tiny mound of nougat candy I had set aside for her. Thanks. She kissed the top of my head before I could duck away. Scooping up the candy, she retreated to her room. Once I had separated my candy, I chucked everything I wanted back in my bag and went to sit on the couch. There were PG and G rated scary movies on the television, but it was all I was allowed to watch, so I didn't mind. My father joined me on the couch as we watched an old Tim Burton film. He was happy with his peppermint candy, and he was quickly eating through what I had given him. I was glad that he liked that stuff. Peppermint candy always tasted like eating toothpaste to me. In the kitchen, my mom was cooking dinner. I could smell the chicken pot pie and mashed potatoes already. I found myself getting hungry for food despite the fact that I was already stuffed with candy. Jacqueline, my mom called from the kitchen. It's dinner time. You can game later. Come get some food. There was no answer from Jacqueline, and she did not appear from her bedroom. This wasn't weird at all. If she had her headphones on, she wouldn't have heard my mom calling her. I heard my mom sigh as she left the kitchen and walked up the stairs to my sister's room. My mom must have thought she had her headphones on as well. The scream that came from my sister's room was loud, 
piercing and unexpected. I spit out the Hershey bar I had been chewing from the suddenness of it. Another scream followed the first one, and my dad leapt off the couch and ran upstairs. I sat there frozen for a full second before running up the stairs after my dad. As I walked into Jacqueline's room, there was another loud wail from my mother, followed by a scream from my father. Jacqueline was on the floor. Her body was contorted and curled in on itself, not moving and not breathing. Her mouth was wide open, and her eyes were rolled back so far into her head that I could only see white. Her face and body had turned an almost iridescent bluish purple the same color as the candy wrapper still clutched in her hand. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell your story or read a creepypasta, email me at the address in the description. You should check out a story I wrote called Behind the Triangles, which I did last Halloween. I'll put a link to it at the end. And I'll also have another creepypasta before Halloween or on Halloween. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Cory Rhino. And be good to animals, even people. See ya. Yo, Holding out their sacks. <laughs> ah, fuck. Holding out my bag. <laughs> Holding out my bag, I said. Holding out my... <laughs> <laughs>